Note that light's not red, but he says go ahead. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Burke County Board of Commissioners for Tuesday, May the 15th, 2018. want to uh, ask you to uh, silence your mobile devices at this time. If you have uh, cell phones, tablets, things like that, that make a racket, please uh, put those on vibrate or cut them off at this time so that it uh, won't disturb our meeting tonight. And remind all of our commissioners, as well as those who may be making presentations, that when you come to the podium, please be sure to turn on the microphone so that everybody can hear you and that to the folks who are watching by Internet or other means can also hear you and know what's going on as well. We're glad to have Dr. Kevin uh, Frederick with Waldenson Presbyterian Church with us tonight to bring our invocation. And uh, Reverend Doctor, if you'll come and let's all stand together. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your providential care and guidance in our lives and in our home community of Burke County. And we claim your lordship over our lives this day. This evening we come seeking your blessing to guide our county leaders in the business before them. Grant them wisdom and the gift of discernment as they listen and respond to the business and the needs of this county. We thank you, Lord, for their dedicated leadership, and we ask for a servant's heart for our commissioners and the county employees. We pray your blessings will move us closer to the fulfillment that you have for us in this community. And we ask all these things in the strong name of our holy God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Now we're going to ask the uh, W.A. Young Elementary folks to come up under the leadership of Amber Lackey and lead us in our pledge tonight. Guys, come right up here, and we'll face the flag and follow your leadership. All right, this brings us to item number four of our agenda tonight, approval of agenda. Uh, gentlemen, you've had the agenda in advance to review. I'll entertain a motion to uh, so approve the agenda. Thank you, Wayne. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I believe that's all of us, Madam Clerk. All right, item five, approval of meeting minutes. We have before us minutes from the March 23rd, 2018 special meeting, April 3rd, 2018 pre-agenda meeting, and the April 17th, 2018 regular meeting. <laughs> Gentlemen, you've had time to review these. I will entertain a motion to approve these minutes as presented. Mr. Chairman, I'm assuming you want all three of them, so I make the motion to approve the minutes of March 23, of April 3, 
Yeah, of April 17th, 2018. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Gentlemen, you've heard the motion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I believe that's all of us, Madam Clerk. Brings us to item number six, presentations tonight. We have several items on this area. First one will be from Burke County Public Schools, presentation of financial data for the period ending March 31, 2018. That's going to be presented tonight by Keith Lawson, the finance officer for the schools. Afternoon, Keith. Good evening, distinguished gentlemen and lady. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to present the third quarter financial results uh, for March year to date for uh, Burke County Public Schools. Ms. Hoyman and I were just talking and uh, I know I've condensed my presentation over recent years more and more. Uh, I don't want to waste your time, but I do want it to be meaningful and relevant. Uh, so at any time uh, during this, if, if you want me to try to expand or, or if you have questions, uh, please feel free to jump in and, and just let me know. Uh, the first schedule. The estimated column, as you can see, uh, we have estimated total revenues for Burke County Public Schools for the 2017-18 school year to be $107.5 million. Of that, the state funding is our uh, 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 largest source uh, with you, the county commission, being the second largest source of funds. The next column would represent our current March year-to-date spending with the uh, column just to the right, the previous column being the previous year. Uh, wanted those comparisons so it's a little more relevant and you have a benchmark to measure against. If we go to the bottom of the current column uh, through March, we have spent $78.5 million uh, versus the previous year of $77.5 million. This represents a 1.3% increase in spending. As you can see from the footnotes, uh, just below uh, these numbers, about 82.5% or $89 million of Burke County Public Schools' entire budget is payroll and benefits related expenses. Given uh, the increases in health insurance, uh, uh, retirement match, and then wage increases, we would have expected at this point in the year to, to uh, for spending year over year to be up about 3.4%. Uh, so we are certainly ahead of budget, which I'm happy to uh, report tonight. Uh, it's not necessarily the best of indicators. From my perspective, financially, it's a great situation. Uh, but we do have and have had over the course of this entire year many vacant positions that we've been unable to fill. Uh, currently, we have eight and a half certified or teaching positions that are vacant and seven classified or that support staff uh, that are still vacant. While that obviously is beneficial to us financially, uh, it certainly uh, leaves uh, deficits in areas of operations. Uh, the next uh, schedule is specifically the local spending uh, and by source, as you can see, uh, regular instructional support and development, <coughs> payment to other governmental units, which primarily consist of uh, the charter schools and, uh, and, and uh, the Avery County school system for our Jonas Ridge kids. And then uh, the balancing factor there at that top part of the schedule is revenues over or under expenditures, which represents in other words, our fund balance or savings account. I have for you uh, uh, years uh, previous for uh, uh, just perspective. Our budget this year was six, just over $16 million. Through the first three quarters, we have spent $11.9 million. Again, although we have uh, many funding sources, uh, we have an order of priority of spending, which is state funds first federal funds second, local third, and so on uh, through our different funding sources. Uh, the reason being is, of course, state and federal funds. We certainly don't want to revert that money back, so we spend those, those funds first. Uh, our fourth quarter in local spending will be our heaviest. Uh, that is when we will pay out our certified supplements in, in mid-June for all of our teachers to give them a, a, a nice uh, parting gift for the summer. Uh, uh, so rather than using uh, a 
approximately $300,000 in fund balance as we had originally anticipated, uh, assuming full employment. We're now anticipating a $200,000 plus, uh, and, and I say probably plus, uh, uh, contribution to fund balance this year. Uh, so with that being said, I'll entertain any questions that you uh, may have. Okay, thank you, Keith. Any questions for Keith on his report? Mr. Chairman, uh, we got them all answered, I think, most of the time in pre agenda but I did want to kind of clarify one thing, Mr. Lawson. You said you had eight and a half long-term vacancies, been vacant a long time? It, it of course, has varied over the course of the year. Yeah. Uh, as of this report, we had eight and a half certified and seven, I think it was, classified positions. That's been as high as 15 uh, certified and I think about the same classified at certain points during the year. Well, the question was, uh, I, I'm assuming that we're using substitutes to fill those positions? Indeed, we are. Uh, we're available, and also, uh, in some cases, for the classified positions, uh, we're using uh, our, our uh, temporary agency to fill some of those gaps. Well, for us, what that tells me is we're not saving all the salaries of those eight and a half position but we're saving part of it so a substantial part yes sir that is correct but you, but but you are right we're not saving the entire eight and a half positions thank you other questions all right here none i'll entertain a motion to accept this report as presented so moved, thank you Maynard. all those in favor say aye aye opposed no <coughs> well, that's all of us thank you Keith. thank you Brings us to item number two, Western Piedmont Community College, presentation of financial data for period ending March 31, 2018. That'll be presented by Sandy Holman with uh, the college tonight. Hi, Sandy. Hi, how are you tonight? It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to give a brief summary of our finances through March 31st, 2018, as we move into the last quarter of fiscal year 2018. First, we will look at our state funds, where we have a, a total state budget of $14,519,387. And through the third quarter, we have spent 74.8% of this budget. This does not include the items that are encumbered, only actual expenditures since we are on a cash basis system. And as Mr. Lawson said, the last quarter is usually your heaviest quarter as far as expenditures. So we are watching our state funds carefully. The next three columns in light blue represent the county budget and actual expenditures through March 31st, where our current budget is $2,485,200, and we have spent 72.4% of this budget. We are on track for 2018, do not see any problems or issues with our county funds. The final three columns show our institutional budget. We're budgeted at $5,675,855 which includes student financial aid, grants, self-supporting courses, our bookstore, basically anything that's not state or county funds. <clears throat> Most of these accounts are restricted based upon their purpose, and our bookstore actually uh, generates 75% or 15% of this, and our financial aid, 75% of this. So you can see where a majority of our institutional budget lies. And we do spend most of our institutional budget within the first three quarters, uh, mainly because it's financial aid and you have the fall semester and the spring semester where financial aid is given in September and February. So that's why a large majority of the institutional budget is expended before you get to the third quarter or before you get to the fourth quarter. The total combined college budget for 17-18 is 22680442 which we have expended 17921366 or 79%. Uh, we feel confident in managing our expenditures for the rest of the year into the fourth quarter. Um, so we have no issues or issues there. The next slide that you will see is our breakdown of expenditures of our categories for county expenditures. The major expenditure items are salaries and benefits at 25%, utilities at 26%, contracted services at 15 percent so you can see the majority of where the county funds are spent this concludes my report for the third quarter i'll be happy to answer any questions okay thank you sandy any questions for sandy on her report mr chairman here and none i make the motion we accept the report all right thank you Maynard. all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed no it's all thank of us you. thank you sandy 
Item number three on presentations, EMS recognition of receiving the American Heart Association Mission Lifeline EMS Gold Plus Award. This will be presented by Greg Curry, our Emergency Medical Services Director. And I don't believe I've seen Jason tonight, but... Uh... Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's my honor to be up here this evening. I appreciate your inviting us. I'll be here to represent, merely represent EMS and the job that they do. Because this award is basically given to people whose boots hit the pavement and get it done seven days a week, 365 a year. The award that we've received last year was the first year's annual award that the American Heart Association gives out. And they give out different levels. Last year was the first time we actually applied for the award. And we received the silver award because the silver award is the highest you can get the first time you apply. The staff worked very hard to try and raise that bar. And this year we found out that we were awarded the American Heart Association uh, Gold Plus Award, which is the highest award that they give out to any of At the award ceremony last month, there were seven counties in the state of North Carolina that received that Gold Plus, which basically means we're the highest standard that you can achieve. This certainly, as I said, is the boots that hit the pavement. It begins with dispatch, the award. I won't go into all the criteria. I actually don't know all the criteria, so I brought the experts here who do know the criteria. But the award is basically how fast you respond to someone who's having a cardiac event, a heart attack, a specific, you know, there's specific types of heart attacks, but how quickly we re respond to people having an event affecting the heart, that obviously means how fast we are dispatched, how accurately we are dispatched, how quickly we get on the scene, how rapidly we identify what's going on with the patient. Usually we turn around and go back, talk to dispatch. Dispatch notifies Fry Regional Medical Center, which is our receiving facility for these types of patients. We also are on the scene with many first responders, hundreds of first responders in the county, which are, are is just unbelievable. We wouldn't be able to do our job without them. So it's my honor to be up here to represent. I would like to introduce a few members of my staff that are here, if you'd be so kind. If you will stand when I introduce you. EMT Alejandro Bosart. Paramedic Kim Toole. Paramedic Sherry Mayfield. Sergeant Robbie Milton. Lieutenant Ronnie Taylor, and I don't want to say the most important, but Sergeant Nikki Carswell, and I'd like to ask her to come up and join me. She has the award. Sergeant Carswell is our, what we call STEMI coordinator, which is a very specific type of heart attack that presents itself on an EKG that we recognize rather quickly. She is the STEMI coordinator. She was at the meeting in Raleigh, yes. the awards in Raleigh, she received that award. She's worked diligently, very hardworking to just push the boundaries of what we're capable of doing. So I'd like to introduce Sergeant Carswell because if you guys do have any questions, I promise you she's far more prepared to answer them than I am, so thank you. All right, thank you, Greg. And I, we certainly want to uh, recognize and congratulate all you folks tonight. And I want to get a, a picture too before you guys leave, but uh, Gentlemen, any question for Nikki or Greg on this achievement? Mr. Chairman, if I might make a comment. Um, I have shared this story one time before with you, but, you know, EMS is one of those people you hope you don't have to use. It's kind of like the fire department. Uh, but I'm going to tell you my personal appearance, uh, excuse me, experience uh, with this group. Uh, the lady later died, but... You couldn't have been any faster. You couldn't have done any better. And I really compliment you on your speed. Uh, it's, it's awful nice to know when people who know what they're doing are there and you just kind of in the way. So you just stand back and admire the work. But I, they really did do a good job for me and I, I appreciate it. And one out of one of the seven is a great honor and you need to be commended for it. Absolutely. Any other comments? Nikki, any comments from you at this time? 
the um, the American Heart Association, the the Mission Lifeline Gold Plus Award is um, is a significant standard that we achieve. It's a significant amount of effort by our employees, from the telecommunicators to the really proactive and aggressive first responder program we have here in the county. We absolutely, as Director Curry said, we cannot do our job without them, and they should be commended as well, and will be thanked at, at the um, BLS in service in June. You have premier cardiac care in Burke County. I don't know that many people outside of EMS realize that, but you have premier cardiac care by definition from the American Heart Association, by statistics and standards. The best cardiac care in the nation is in this area right here, by standards and statistics. So you're very fortunate. Um, the county as a whole, the citizens here are very fortunate to have the kind of care that we have at our availability here. It's um, the, the very short of it is when a patient is having a specific type of heart attack from the time that we get on the scene, the patient sees some, a paramedic in a white shirt to the time that their um, event is over completely and the cardiac cath lab at Fry has to be less than 90 minutes. Less than 90 minutes, we have to meet that 75% of the time or greater. And we do that. We meet it approximately 92% of the time. That's um, snow on the roads, thunderstorms, tornadoes, uh, 45 minute transport from Longtown. So you have a, a very, very competent group of paramedics, EMTs, first responders. We should be thankful to have them. Thank you, Nikki. I want all you folks to come right up here. Maybe we can stand right behind you here along this side. And uh, while they're coming, let me just say I serve on the. Uh, Y'all come ahead right on up here to the front. The EMS Quality Management Committee, and I am just um, amazed every time we meet at the uh, collaboration and the way these guys work together with all of our agencies throughout the county. Uh, when they come to the room, everybody kind of gets their own uh, act out of the way, and they come together to, uh, to absolutely uh, work for Burke County. And we have uh, Premier EMS and Premier services in every area and I, I just want to say I appreciate all that they do. All right, great. Let's give them another big hand. entertain a motion to recognize again and congratulate the EMS department on this uh, prestigious accomplishment. So, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Wayne. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I believe that's all of us, Madam Clerk. All right. Now, uh, this brings us to item four of presentation. Another group is doing a great job in our area. And this will be a Mimosa Counseling Group uh, proclamation declaring May as National Mental Health Month. And I'm going to ask Bill Lennon and members of that group to come to the podium and uh, make this uh, presentation thank you for this opportunity to be before the board of commissioners tonight uh, from mimosa christian counseling center since 2004 uh, this unique uh, 5013c nonprofit has been providing services and mental health counseling to burke county and the surrounding areas tonight we come with to talk to you about the mental health month that's being observed nationally through that I would just like to mention very quickly that uh, since our founding in 2014, individuals have served uh, in various volunteer capacities and the board itself has been uh, uh, represented with over s individuals from over 16 churches in the area and we expect that to uh, continue to increase as the years progress. The current board is uh, comprised of Dr. Dave Beck, uh, Doris Bentley, Ann Blackwell is our current chair. Dr. Tom Bland was the visionary founder uh, for the uh, concept of the center. Sally Dixon, Ruth Duckworth, Steve Garrison, Ed Harden, Millie King, Vicki Lane, and myself, Bill Lennon. At this time, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Vicki Lane to come forward and read just a quick commentary. Good evening. Uh, Chair Britton, Commissioners, May is observed as National Mental Health Month. 
Burke County is known regionally, statewide, and nationally as among the best in care and most concentrated of professional area centers uh, for hospitalized mental health treatment. However, for our citizen residents who go about seeking work, dealing with depression or grief, balancing work and family, or dealing with accepted stresses of daily living, mental health therapeutic counseling is not always as accessible as one would think. Increasingly, we hear and see reports of persons of all ages, children, adolescents, adults, and even seniors, withdrawing into themselves, suffering discouragement, depression, and loss of hope. Even more so are the horrific instances in the news and television. We have already learned this year of persons lashing out with destructive behaviors, all too often threatening, harming, and even killing others or killing themselves. Today, the safety net of government mental health services is being stretched to breaking and significantly challenged with access to programs, not enough counselors, and therefore also the need for significant citizen taxpayer support that this commission, along with state and federal governments, must find ways to provide. Never before has the need for mental health services been more in the forefront. Additionally, providing for mental health counseling requires the awareness of both the public and support by citizens, businesses, churches, schools, and institutions to erase the stigma of mental illness that still prevents one in four persons from seeking help. In 2004, Mimosa Christian Counseling Center was founded for all of Burke's citizens as a community of faith supported mission outreach. Mimosa Christian Counseling Center opened its doors as a refuge for those suffering mental anguish. Over 2,200 families and individuals have been aided by the certified counselors of Mimosa Christian Counseling Center. Today, well over 30% of those being assisted by Mimosa are still unable to access um, traditional counseling due to lack of insurance coverage, income gap, or non-qualification for government assistance, or personal financial inability to afford care. As a community-based nonprofit founded in Christian ministry, Mimosa Christian Counseling Center remains a unique, a unique provider to those in need, but requires the prayers and support of the public, businesses, area churches, and private donations to continue its mission of restoring hope for individuals, children, and families without regard to religious affiliation or their ability to pay. Through the efforts of private charitable supporters, Mimosa Christian Counseling Center has provided Burke area citizens who are unable to afford therapeutic counseling over $500,000 in counseling services. Commissioners, this month, Mimosa Christian Counseling Center joins with mental health professionals throughout our state and country to bring attention to the seriousness and scope of mental health issues around us. We ask that you as elected leaders of Burke County join with us in our resolve to promote awareness for good mental health for all citizens and to provide access to therapeutic counseling for those in need. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Bill. Any questions for uh, these folks uh, before we act on the proclamation? Mr. Chairman, this is an excellent proclamation. And I know Kay already has it on the Internet, but it would be nice that it, if it could be printed in the paper and other places for understanding and for the knowledge of it. Thank you, Mary. Any other comments? We are pleased to uh, have you with us tonight. We're exceptionally uh, grateful for all that you guys do to help uh, folks in our community. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion, gentlemen, uh, to uh, approve the proclamation that you have before you. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to adopt this very weather worthy proplication number 2018-04. All right. Thank you, Madam Gentlemen, you've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That's all of us, Madam Clerk. Vicki, Bill, all of you guys that are with Mimosa, thank you for being here tonight. And again, thank you for what you do. All right. This brings us to item number seven, scheduled public hearings. We have None tonight, so we'll move on to items number eight, informal public comments. Madam Clerk, do we have any comments tonight? We do, Mr. Chairman. We have uh, one speaker, Mr. Champ Ray. <laughs> Ray, you'll come forward.
Thank you for allowing me to speak to you here for a few minutes. I'm not a very long talker. First off, I'm up here to represent all of the veterans that reside in the county of Burke. And we're talking about about 7,000 veterans. I'm also the commander of the Disabled American Veterans here in Burke County. And I'm representing all of the organizations that are veterans organizations in Burke County. We have requested that memorial be placed on the old county courthouse grounds. And uh, so far, we haven't been too successful in this, but we hope and in our hearts that there will be efforts to approve this request. I have spoken to the other Morganton town council, and I understand that two approvals are required. Uh, Morganton leases that uh, land from Burke County, so they have a say-so on what goes on it. I have talked to one member of the council. I intend to talk to the rest of them to see if we can get a, uh, an approval from them. My only concern is I sort of feel like, and the rest of the veterans do too, that I shouldn't even have to be up here asking for this. It should be an automatic type feeling. And I consider this to be apolitical, no politics involved. It's just a simple request that we place memorial honoring all of the people killed in action from Burke County, from World War I to the present date. And this would sort of complete a picture I have in my mind, and I hope everyone else has that kind of picture in their mind. We already have some plaques depicting the Constitution of the United States, Articles 1 through 7, Declaration of Independence. In other words, there's already in place. And if we put a memorial there in that same area, that would complete a picture showing you what the veterans actually died for, okay? And if anybody wants to talk to me, my phone number is on. I think Jay has it there, and uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Madam Clerk, any other public comment tonight? That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. This brings us to item number nine, consent agenda. And I'll uh, recognize our county manager, Brian Steen, to... Uh, cover those items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, uh, you have 12 items on your consent agenda. The first is Burke County Public Schools school construction change orders numbers five and seven. The BOC resolution requesting General Assembly to expand scope and funding of roadside cleanup programs. Item three, clerk reappointments and appointments to child protection, child fatality team. Item four, clerk reappointments and appointments to East Burke Senior Center Advisory Board. Item five, clerk appointment to the WPCC Board of Trustees. Item six, finance audit contract for physical 17-18. Item seven, health department 2017 state of the county health report. Item eight, IT multi-year contract for shared cost and operating records management system. Item nine, JCPC approval of the county plan for Burke County and funding allocation. Item 10, JCPC, approval of fiscal year 19 JCPC certification. Item 11, tax department, tax collection report for April 2018. And item 12, tax department release refund report for April 2018. That concludes your consent agenda, sir. Thank you, Brian. Gentlemen, you've heard the uh, consent agenda as read by county manager. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Wayne. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? No. That's all of us, Madam Clerk. Item number 10, items for decision tonight. This brings us to a, a long-awaited item that uh, we have been working on for a number of months already, and I'll entertain that information from our county manager uh, concerning the presentation of the recommended budget for fiscal year 18-19 and scheduling a public hearing. Mr. County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, as we normally do this time of year, I've worked with our finance officer and department heads and other entities to, uh, to come up with a recommended budget for your consideration. 
It is balanced and is based on the current tax rate of 69 and a half cents. Uh, there are details to a certain point within the budget message. I don't want to delay you, uh, but uh, we've tried our best to answer the needs of the county as best we can with the funds that are available. And we will, of course, have our first um, budget workshop next Monday, and we'll have an opportunity to go over some of the details of changes from this budget uh, from last year. All right, thank you, Brian. Gentlemen, uh, you've heard this information. As uh, Brian has shared, the budget will be uh, online, I believe, Madam Clerk. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, it'll be uh, available after the meeting, and uh, the board's electronic version is posted in your share, SharePoint account under budget. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion uh, or acknowledge receipt of the uh, manager's recommended budget for 2018 and then to uh, schedule a public hearing for Tuesday, June the 19th, 2018 at 6 p.m. or as soon thereafter as persons may be heard. Entertain a motion to that effect. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Maynard. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by the uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that's five to zero. All right, thank you, Brian. This brings us to item number 11, reports and comments. We'll have a report tonight from our finance officer, uh, Paul Limes. Paul? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, information in front of you, uh, there's two pages. The first one, general fund, which is the, the basic operating fund of the county. It's where the property taxes collected from the citizens are recorded and spent on various programs and activities the uh, at the top of that page the revenues are broken down into the major categories where the commissioners have um, exercise influence over and how they're allocated property taxes you see we're currently at 96.2 percent of budget um, given the uh, one half cent tax rate if you apply that to where we were last march we're roughly at the same percentage of budget as we were last year uh, sales tax, both the regular sales tax and Article 44, which is a special sales tax that the legislature put in place that uh, is used to fund schools. You'll see both of those are running slightly above the 75% collection rate, so we're um, in, in really good shape there. And then all of the revenues basically been the uh, grants and reimbursements from programs like DSS and health and various other uh, departments are lumped into one category. Uh, we're at 50% uh, there. The one thing I want to point out in that category, as well as on down into the departmental expenditures, DSS, what could be misleading is that in the current year, there was a change in how the child daycare and Medicaid transportation, uh, how those programs worked. And in prior years, you know, the county would make those payments and then we would get reimbursed from the state. But now all those go directly to the uh, uh, vendors, so the money's not flowing through the county anymore. And so that's, you'll see that reflected in, you know, obviously less revenue coming into the county, but also in DSS budget, where you see a $19 million budget. We've only spent 11 through nine months, so we're at uh, just under 60%. Um, if you factored in those payments, you know, if, if uh, compared to last year, DSS would really be at more like a 71 percent uh, uh, expenditure rate. So there's, you know, both of those are offsetting. You know, expenditures are less, but also revenues are less. On the departmental expenditures, and I won't go through each of those, you'll see the, the largest ones, Burke County Schools, we're at 74 percent, which is where we should be. Uh, DSS, I just mentioned, debt service. The, uh, uh, we spent 3.2 out of a $7 million budget. And that is because most of the debt payments are due April the 1st, which is actually in the, in the fourth quarter. So those aren't reflected there, but that entire budget will be spent. So uh, then in the EMS, we're uh, running a little bit ahead of schedule at 70%. So we're in good shape there. The uh, interfund transfers, a lot of those transfers are made in the fourth quarter. So, uh, you know, we're uh, percentage wise, we're behind, but we're, we're still in good shape. And then, of course, the other big number down is the sheriff, and they're on pace at 74%. So overall, we're uh, a little bit ahead of you know where we were last year, so 
Um, you know, we should surplus funds this year. And uh, if there's any particular questions about a particular department or something, I'll try to answer those before we move on to the enterprise funds. All right. Thank you, Paul. Any questions for Paul on this page before he goes uh, to the next page? Mr. Chairman, on, uh, Paul, at the bottom of the line, fund balance, increase, decrease. Mm -hmm. Do I understand we've spent 97, uh, excuse me, nine million seven hundred twenty-nine plus dollars? No, we're we're running ahead through nine months. We're running ahead. Yeah. And that's because, you know, obviously property taxes come in mainly July, August, December, and January. So as the, each month goes on, that number will get smaller and smaller because the bulk of our revenue has already been collected. You feel safe in making a prediction about where we will be at the end of the year? <laughs> well, I'm not going to make a prediction other than, you know, based on these numbers, we're going to surplus. We're going to add the fund balance instead of spend. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Okay, going on to the uh, second page of the enterprise funds, which um, are activities that are supposed to be covered by the revenue that they uh, generate. We have three enterprise funds, water and sewer. Um, you'll see that revenue, we're uh, a little bit ahead of where we normally are. Expenditures, we're behind, but that is because there are some expenses that have not been uh, incurred yet, and those are transfers to the general fund to repay the April 1st debt, which will obviously hit in the fourth quarter. And there's some equipment for updating the SCADA system that uh, was not incurred in the first three quarters, but uh, you know has uh, been on order, and so that will be paid out in the fourth quarter. Uh, the solid waste disposal, uh, most of the revenue there is generated by property tax uh, collections. <laughs> Similar to the general fund, we will um, uh, that number will not get much larger as the, as the year goes on. The expenditures, same situation there. We have um, capital expenditures that have not been made yet, and so that uh, will happen in the fourth quarter, but we still should be in good shape there. And solid waste collections is funded from solid waste disposal, so the uh, uh, we're in, in good shape there. We're running about equal. So overall, I think the uh, uh, you know there's there's no issues that uh, we need to be uh, concerned with. You know, the board um, took care of the only issues earlier on medical care and housing costs for uh, the sheriff. So, uh, again, overall, we're in good shape after three quarters. All right. Thank you, Paul. Any other questions for Paul on finance reports? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept this report as presented. Thank you, Scott. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Hey, that's all of us, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Paul. All right, this brings us to item number two, reports and comments from our board and staff. we will start with uh, J.R. Um, don't have any comments tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Blaine. Scott and I had a tourism meeting today, and tourism, we're, we're really doing well with our funding, with our occupancy tax, and... Uh, Seems like we got a good bit of money there to spend for marketing, and we're looking at doing a better job of marketing uh, for events and uh, small conventions and that. So uh, and I think we're going to try to hire a, another position to uh, go after that kind of business. So everything looks positive there. Well, very good. Mayor? Yes, in addition to the JCPC, the mental health, Greater Hickory MPO, um, I attended the National Prayer Day at the old courthouse. Wayne was also there. Very good, one of the best ones I've attended. Also attended South Mountain State Park ribbon cutting, and the clerk was there at that event also. Uh, grand opening of the EMS number six on Miller Ridge Road. Uh, Western Piedmont Council Government's annual meeting. Um, and uh, finally, Western Piedmont Air Quality Oversight Committee meeting the annual conference. Madam Clerk is set for July 26th and 27th. The agenda and topics will be sent within a few weeks. They did ask that we request a little bit more publicity on the behalf of that convention. 
uh, meaning to publicize it somehow a little more. So, uh, and that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, man. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got some pictures for you, uh, Steve. Uh, that's an article about our, our trails that's recently done, been done. And then there's a, a, a pamphlet, a brochure that's been made up by our folks to go out, and we'll be sharing that with folks for the Fauna Flora State Trails. And then next, uh, got a picture of the uh, where we are with the jail construction today. This is just before 12 o'clock today. So they were going to look at pouring the uh, slab for the booking area of that building, but uh, I'm not sure the weather's going to work with them this week. But uh, they're they're starting to move along, and it's, it's looking like a little anthill out there with all the folks that are moving around doing different things. But uh, that's all I have, sir. All right. Thank you, Brian. Johnny? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, reports for the Burke Quality of Water and the Library and Health are in your packages. The only comment I'd like to make is uh, Burke Quality of Water has announced that every entity uh, in the association is doing new taps, especially up around Lake James. There's a lot of activity for new building going there. So I think it's indicative of the fact that people are actually moving back into county and, and building again. I think it's uh, very significant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. Scott? Kind of expand upon what uh, Commissioner Carswell and Commissioner Abley mentioned. Um, uh, Wayne and I uh, attended that TDA meeting this morning, and and um, last uh, April a year ago there were 32 people in there looking to relocate. This April there were 52. So you look at that percentage increase, and and for the, um, we they've had people ro relocate here uh, to retire and things that uh, and other reasons, but. Uh, they've never had this many people come into the TDA to look for housing and to inquire about um, uh, everything about Burke County because they're coming here for jobs. And that has um, been prevalent. It's the most uh, relocations, he said, because of job reasons uh, since he's been at the TDA. So um, things are moving in the right direction. Uh, several of us were out at uh, VICA the other day, and that was impressive to see that facility. So there's a lot of jobs coming. Uh, we can thank uh, uh, everybody, the municipalities and the county, Alan Wood, for doing such a great job. But uh, we're really starting to see uh, the fruits of our labor, so it's quite exciting. Uh, also, I uh, had a Parks and Rec Board meeting. Uh, we met up at actually Fauna Floor Park, had a great time. Like I said, we keep beating it in. If you haven't been up there, please go. It's, it's an amazing place. And um, that's all I've got. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Scott. Madam Clerk? No comments for me tonight, thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, I did uh, attend a number of committee meetings this month, BDI, DSS, and uh, the EMS Quality Management Group, as I mentioned earlier. Again, I just can't say enough about what those guys do. I'm, I'm always so impressed with uh, how they work together to be sure that uh, everybody from fire to EMS, the hospitals, are uh, just all in lockstep together, and I think that shows in the in the award that they received tonight that uh, because without everybody working together uh, that that can't happen at the speed uh, required to, for that award so uh, and and some of those reports are also in your package so i won't belabor any of that okay uh, with that we'll go to item 12 vacancy announcements madam clerk Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We have the following opportunities for citizens to get involved in county boards and committees. The Hickory Regional Planning Commission, the Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committees, Council on Aging, Council on Aging for the Regional Area, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, City of Morganton Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJs, the Voluntary Agriculture Board, Burke County Board of Adjustment and Planning Board, Burke County Parks and Recreation Commission, Western Piedmont Regional Transit Authority Transportation Advisory Board, Western Piedmont Community College Board of Trustees, Partners Behavioral Health Management, Animal Advisory Board, the Board of Health, Region E Development Corporation, Veterans Service Board, and the Burke Senior Center Advisory Council. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Again, as always, I would encourage our citizens to uh, take advantage of the opportunity to serve on these boards. There are lots of opportunity, uh, and if you can uh, 
provide service, please consider doing that. Make contact with our clerk. She can assist you with an application for all of those uh, vacancies. Item 13, closed session. We do have need for closed session tonight uh, to discuss threatened or pending litigation, to preserve the attorney-client privilege, to discuss economic development matters, and to discuss personnel matters. And I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session by North Carolina General Statute 143, 318, 11, A, 3, 4, and 6, and invite uh, Alan Wood to the meeting also. So moved. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. We'll take about a five minute recess and go into closed session.
Okay, we will return to open session. I will note that proper motion to come out of closed session was made in closed session and uh, no action was taken in closed session. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to recess to Monday, May 21st, 2018 at 3 p.m. for our budget meeting. So Thank you. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Thank you very much.